I am unashamed. What about you? Much. I'm just saying, you know, I, I can never say, well, it can't, it won't happen to me. I'm like, no, that's not good oh, look, logic. Look, here's no the one thinks it's going to happen to them. We live well, on a planet with a lot of people, yep. and we all, at some time, once we get over the age of a child, do evil things. Some especially those in the you know some are mentally challenged and so when you look at school shootings and you look at guys going into church buildings and just unloading like what just happened in texas you think well what are we going to do about that well there's a lot of people there's a lot of people that are evil there's a lot of people with you know mental disorder so is it possible yes here's my take i read a verse like says the weapons we fight with are not the you know the weapons of the world where's that at first corinthians 10 mm -hmm. or second corinthians 10 it's one of those so i'm when i'm at the church building i am in the ephesians 6 spiritual armor mode because god is using me to speak to lead worship to i'm that's what i'm focused on now look other members of the body that's not their thing. They're not up in front, as we say, delivering lessons. So I, I can't do both. So I'm letting them use their their gift, which is watching my back. So when I'm at the church building, my point was I don't have a bunch of weapons on me. Now you do, and guess what? That's fine. You may can do both. But I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to trust that maybe God is going to, you know, watch over me in this in this moment and if someone does start firing if i can make it to my truck i will get an actual weapon but i'm at the at the time i just i thought about it and i'm like you know what i'm not gonna worry about it so that was my take and you you kind of so you're that to what me. you're saying is you're you're for like the guys in the church in the texas church that were prepared and ready to right. handle it that was different than if you say you were preaching at that church or leading worship or whatever yeah I, what i'm but saying you're gonna is, let them handle it i made a decision i'm gonna let them handle it at the church where his building. dad's pretty much both because he's got well, you know he, phil's trying to do both and look i don't have a problem with it we we got into this argument in the duck blind because i said i'm not worried about it because i look around at our church and there's a lot of people with weapons we, we and there's a lot of like train the, people yeah we, we're like the airport we have a cop car parked in front when you pull up to our church building there's a cop car sitting there which why does the airports do that they're saying danger if you have evil intent there's a cop car and there's uniform officers and undercover so i just made a decision i thought you know what i'm not gonna worry about it. i'm gonna go with the i'm because it takes a joint effort you got to change the heart in people and on sundays i'm there to serve and give lessons and I'm just not worried about it, you know. Now, if the shooting breaks out, I'm going to try to get to the truck because I have a weapon there, Yeah, you know. So I'm not going to be, so you know, are, are silly. You, are you ready for the rebuttal? Yeah. <laughs> That's just my take. It's it, And it's nothing wrong with your logic. Okay. All right, Here's my greatest fear. I don't mind being martyred. If God decides he wants me taken out that way. Right. I don't mind that at all. In me, fact, like the apostles, me, I, I think it's a privilege. Yep. I mean, the, the kind of death I might die. So right. if I'm on the premises with the brothers and somebody comes in, a shooter comes in, and I get I get whacked in the process, mm -hmm. I don't mind that at all. If I have complete trust in God if he says, here's the way you're going out. Jesus told Peter, he said, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and you went where you wanted to go. But when you get old... Uh, somebody else is going to dress you and take you where you don't want to go. Right. He said this to describe what kind of death Peter would to glorify God. John twenty one. John twenty one. So I said, you know, that's that's you know to die for the cause. But my greatest fear is what I don't want to happen is the brothers, the sisters, the little children right. in that congregation where I preach at i just am going to do everything in my power to keep them from being hurt right it's not so much 
I, I'm worried about me. If God wants to take me, if you know, if God wants to take anybody out, at whatever time he decides you're, you're going to be taken out with whatever method, it's fine with me. But if I'm there and the brothers and sisters, they're, they're little kids, old people are sitting in there and somebody walks in there with a weapon and is in means to kill them all, I'm going to mm. do everything in my power to be at least prepared to take that threat away. I, I, SWAT's on the premises. They're out there. We have armed men. But I'm not thinking of, well, you know, I'm trying to protect myself here. Well, you're, you're kind of like me. Like, I just our, don't want tendency, to get the brothers and sisters of the Almighty hurt. Well, I don't, I, I don't either. But I think what I'm gonna, the, I'm the gonna point is. I'm going to have to protect is, them because a lot of them, I think about it, they don't know anything about weapons at all. They're just sitting there listening right. to God. I don't want them to get hurt. And so I'm going to try to be there to keep that from happening. Well, on the, on the video on footage of the of the incident, yep. which I saw, you know, the guy, I was, I was watching it, he was like, man, that was almost a lucky shot. You know, the guy who took out the, the criminal. But I was like, I've heard people say the same thing about me shooting ducks at long distances. They're like, boy, that was that was lucky. And then, you know, it happens again. They're like, well, that – well, there's another lucky shot, you know. <laughs> there's there's another luck. Well, after a while, it's like Burrow it, from LSU, the quarterback. At first, I said a lot of that stuff looked like dog luck. Yeah. But after a football season <laughs> watching, I said no, no, no. <laughs> the man he can't keeps be doing that it. lucky. I mean, look, if our country, if we had to send a representative to put a football in a small space from like sixty yards away, yeah, I'm I'm gonna nominate him. Yeah. So I get it because I'm the same way. I feel like we possess, you know, we're good with guns. And I, and if there was a scrap, you know, I've always said, you know, if you shoot at me and I have a gun, you better not miss because, you know, I'm coming. And I have skills with rifles and shotguns and pistols. and But I was just saying I just made a decision since I'm up front so much. And, you know, it's just kind of I just don't feel – good about getting up with a pistol and a bible you know I, i'm gonna get up there with a bible and there's people out and I, there with and i pit- feel completely the opposite <laughs> yeah I, I just don't want to worry about it is what i'm saying i'm like if they come I in i hate that i have to worry about it but yeah but I, I i i'm looking around saying well i can't say it'll never happen to me because it's happening to other people and oh, they yeah. said it can't happen here well i'm just saying i'm i'm into the preparation be prepared for the well worst. and it's interesting because our family and both of y'all are speaking more to just i mean one of the things the reason there's a cop car at our church and has been for about five or six years now is because we got famous and so we draw a lot of people in and then we draw some people in that were unbalanced well, right. and Look, so, remember so we, the guy we, that's why you're feeling a little more responsible because it's phil yeah. robertson who has drawn in some people from around the country. I don't True. want to get them hurt. Right, I understand. So it's a little different me. for us. But the ter- guy that walked into Texas, there was really not much rhyme reason. It was a little church. It was a... Uh, I've spoken at that church. Did really? you know that? No. It yeah, was, about it 10 was years multi-racial ago. multiracial yep. church. You know, it was diverse. It was, you know... Which, well, the guy that the first, you know, the guy he shot first, I mean, he was just passing communion. Drug. We see it every Sunday. At our church. I mean, he's just the guy at the end of the pew, and he just happened to be right yeah. there closest, and he gets shot, you know, I mean, does it, passing a communion just makes and me killed. sick. Oh, oh it does it burn me up? Yes. Do, but, but here's the so difference. so many people on the planet, and there's so much evil in our world. It's just going to happen. But think about it, Jace. But think yeah. about the difference, one thing we can all agree on. So I'm watching this last week. I'm watching Elizabeth Warren, for one. There were others that are running for president. And her logic was, I don't feel safer knowing that there's people at my church that are armed. <laughs> I, nobody should be armed. So her 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 logic is disarm everybody, and we'll all be safer. Well, well there would have been way knives. more than two shot. That's the it, problem. She, which, I mean, look, this, having I, two shot is too many. But I'm glad somebody <laughs> stood up with a weapon. And so be- so a dozen weren't shot or or more. I mean, look, having said all that. The best way to fight this battle is introducing Jesus to people, because when you we're, we're full speed ahead, Jason, on that. that. Well, I'm just said that's the best way. But if somebody walks in with a gun, we need other people with good intentions with guns. That is your best 
chance to limit the damage. I mean, I don't see how it's anybody can do that. It's called protective. Right. We're not trying to eliminate all. It, it, it's, it's, you're not going to get rid of all the guns. No, and criminals I, find ways to arm themselves, and they well, always I have. Mean, I believe that's the underlying reason we have the Second Amendment is because you have so many people. So what your what's your yeah. verse from John? You were reading earlier. I mean, it's evil, is what it is. And you know, I love that shooter, the guy that killed the shooter in the church. That was the when they interviewed him, which I thought he handled himself amazingly. You know, that guy to yeah. all of a sudden be thrust in the spotlight. He said, "I shot evil today." Oh, I, yeah. I mean, that was Straight right on line. target. Which five is thousand good- years after, give or take a few, after. Cain killed Abel. The way he killed him is not mentioned. So they went into a field, read in the book of Genesis, and when they went out into the field, Cain killed his brother Abel. 5,000 years later, since we're discussing John today, John the Apostle said, this is the message you heard from, this is the message you heard from the beginning. We should love one another do not be like Cain. He goes back five to 6,000 years earlier to the first murder I know of that's ever been recorded. Do not be like Cain, went out in the field and killed his brother over a tithing issue. Then it says, next little phrase, who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. John the Apostle said people who murder they belong to the evil one. Right. Jesus said it in John 8, and, and, and the Apostle John recorded what he said there. He's the father of murder. When you see murder, whether it's aborting children or killing old people in a church. And why did he murder him? Why did Cain murder him? Here's what the Apostle John said. Because his own actions were evil and his brothers were righteous. Yeah. To me, that sums it all up, tightly packed, where you can't miss it, because they come up with all these reasons on why the shooters do what they do and why the knife people who carve people up, why they do it, and the spears and the swords go back before gunpowder. You say, what was this do not murder, you know, 1,500 years before Jesus? Well, I mean, why would you have to tell them not to murder? They didn't have guns. They didn't have gunpowder. They had sharp sticks, spears, bow and arrows, but you say the murder rate, Al, yeah. think about well, it. It was a slaughterhouse. That's well, right. They didn't even need or guns for them to to uh, it, act on behalf of the evil one. Right. It's evil or there's some, you know, you get that many people, there's mentally challenged people, and, you know, and it, it happens. But I'm, I'm for people with guns taking out people with evil intentions i was just we we got in this huge argument in the dope line i was saying on sunday mornings you know what i've just decided there's a lot of people with weapons and it, I, i'm going to focus on this weapon which is awesome yep and if they come in I, i'm hoping somebody takes them out you know but and they will i mean yeah. we saw that i personally say go with both and take your chances there you go all right, so Dad, I was reading about this woman named Deborah. Literally, her home was stolen out from under. You think about somebody stealing your house? You was know? it a mobile home? <laughs> no, I don't think it was a mobile. Oh, home. they didn't like drive it off. Drive off. Oh. <laughs> These were scammers. You're always talking about, you know, the what do you call it? Computer land. There's a lot of scammers out there in computer land. I know that may surprise you. Oh, they Since stole I it. I don't own a cell phone. Oh. Yeah. And I've never owned one. If you're going to scam me, you're going to have to go some other route other than the Or the cell computer. Phone. They, they can't, or the computer. Right. This you can't is get the, me on the computer but, or the but cell But here's phone. the thing about it. They get the title. That's right. Phone. Here's what you don't know. So your house is, is paid off. So, yeah. so somewhere digitally recorded is the title to your house. So that's the scammers. On the internet. On the internet. So in some place, supposedly safely in the cloud, but somebody hacks in, they mm. get your title, and then they, then all of a sudden it's like somebody shows up at your house, and they're like, oh, you need to get out of my house. And you say, well, no, this is my house. This I've been is here for, happening? Oh, yeah. 
FBI calls home theft one of the fastest growing white collar crimes. They're stealing the deeds and the titles to people's homes online, which is pretty scary when you think about it. I mean, somebody shows up, you've been here, and they're like, Phil, yeah, you need to, uh, this is my house. And then they have an actual copy of it. So uh, we got some friends that are going to help us. Home title lock. That's what they're called. Home title lock. Because you don't have any insurance or anything to protect you from this, which I had never heard about this until these guys made me aware of it. Kind of scary. If you go to HomeTitleLock.com, you register your address. First of all, you make sure you're not already a victim, that somebody hadn't already stole your house. Then you sign up, and they're going to basically protect the legal title to your home. So this is kind of like we talk about with those you know, networks where they can block it out to keep people from getting into it. You know, it's like anything else. People come up with ways to steal. Yeah. You know, I mean, who would have ever thought somebody could steal your house and just show up and say, hey, I'm... Uh, time to move out. I know well, you've been here 40 years. Especially like in Willie Circle. Because, I mean, they look down and see Phil's house and they say, no. <laughs> look at my, no. They see Willie, they're like, oh, I'm going to get that. Ooh, I think I may. Yeah, yeah you, you uh, may be safe, Dad. Phil's anyway. safe. You're safe, Phil. So we know the source. We don't try to keep this from happening. So here's what you do. You go to HomeTitleLot.com. You get 60 days of protection just from going and registering, checking it out. I think it's good. We don't want these evil people still in their house. So, HomeTitleLock.com. I think if I took that AR and had a discussion with them right after they walked in and said, it's now our house, I think I, when I got done with them, they'll say, we don't want this house anymore. I said, good thinking. <laughs> All right. Well, there's, we, we report. Weapons and violence. We report, you decide. But there was a lot of people, you know, asking about that and, I mean, it's yeah. I don't want to against, touch I, on I it. I mean, if Jace wants to do that, uh, hey, that's that's bravery on his part. I'm not. I hey. just made a decision. That's what I'm gonna do. Well, now, I get out from there. Look, you know, the last time I went on a trip, I was it was midnight. I needed gas. I probably should have got it before. I was distracted talking on the phone. I pull off the interstate. The you know now you can get gas whether stores open or close. Everything was closed, but I pull in there. I don't even know where I'm at. Well, look, and here comes a fella walking toward me. I'm pumping gas. It's midnight. There's nobody around. I didn't panic. I just opened opened my back door. I had a sawed-off shotgun. You know, I pulled it out. When I got that about halfway out, his hands went up, and he said, Duck Dynasty fan. (laughs) I said, okay. (laughs) That was good good thinking on his part (laughs) before you asked for his ID. (laughs) <laughs> well, that's what I thought. It's <laughs> like the guy that was coming in the motel room. We were all duck hunting. We had us a raggedy motel. We're there, and at two thirty in the morning, I hear a little clicking sound, and I sat up in bed. It was a light in the hallway, and I looked at that doorknob. It was turning a little bit. I said, "Okay, we're up here, and I think it was Oregon. Idaho, wasn't it? Yeah, Idaho, Idaho. Yeah, I was there. I'm, I'm sitting up. I'm, I, I get to get Did up. Did you bed, say hotel? I'd say and that I, was and a I just motel. happened to have a, a Benelli shotgun there with me, and I reached over and picked it up. There was probably a couple in the magazine, but nothing in the barrel. But I just got it, and I'm sitting there with the in your underwear, in my underwear, <laughs> and I'm looking toward that door. So I, they, he's got a whis- be whiskered man." with a shotgun in his hand and somebody is coming through the door and we're all together in here so we don't have and any you were bristers. like closest to the door because i, I leaned up to the door and i thought well the bill's door opened, got this the door open like 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 <laughs> this you know it was like it was like this and the door opened like that so he's behind the door and i'm just sitting there he <laughs> takes a step past the door and he looks to his left and there i sit in my underwear with the with the shotgun <laughs> aimed at his belly, he said, without me saying a word, his hands came up and he said, wrong room. And I said, I didn't say, yeah, you're in the wrong room or give him a speech. I just said, not in my head. You are correct. <laughs> well, he backs up. I start moving toward him then in case he want to pull some stunt. And he was leaving the parking lot and he looked back at me and I'm still standing there and his hands got higher. <laughs> 
It's like as he went. Back. I never told him to nope. graze his hands, but he just decided he would. <laughs> and he got him higher when you came out, which is a guilty conscience. Now, what was he doing? I do not know. What was his motive? I'm not sure. But <laughs> but it was wrong room. Maybe maybe he just got the wrong room. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> well, he definitely got. But the it's wrong. like that guy was telling some of that story because that that recently happened, and we were talking. He's like, "Well, you you should have shared Jesus with him." I said, "Oh, I did." But if it's midnight and I'm in a dark place by myself and there's a guy come walking toward me, I figure I better get the gun first. And once he declared, oh, I know who you are, Doug Dynasty fam, well, then it kind of set the stage for a good conversation. What are the odds in a dark, dimly lit <laughs> pit stop for gas and you look up and some dude's coming towards you? That's what well, I Number thought. one, what's he doing there? <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> He said he was taking a walk. I said, okay. well, maybe he just became a Duck Dynasty fan once he saw he that. He said Duck Rush. Dynasty fan, and I had the gun there, but I thought, okay, but I still watched him. I mean, I still had my hand on the gun when he walked yeah. up there. Because we had a bogey in, like, our, in our neighborhood one night. Come, you, We were yeah, coming home, sure. and, and he's standing there, and you didn't know who he was, but then you realized that he shouldn't have been in there, you know, he, hanging he, around our houses. Well, listen, what brings yeah. us to the, to the question about – the people who are saying if you get rid of all guns, no one will ever be shot with a gun. Yep. If you get rid of all knives, no one will ever be stabbed with a knife. Right. But then you got to pick up all the the the, the, the tooth. You got to pick up the <laughs> what do you pick. call them? Uh, uh, sharp ice picks. Ice picks. Ice picks. Ice picks. You got to get rid of all them. All sharp instruments. <laughs> yeah. If I you mean. go down that road and saying, and that's the way we will have a safe world, I just don't think it's logical. It's no. not. And, All and the founders, products. The founders, they said you have every right to protect yourself, right. your family, yeah. your home. You, 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 you need. You, we're giving you that. You have the right to be armed. Right. And for that time frame, I mean, not many governments were doing that. In fact, one of the founding fathers, I think it was Jefferson, said most countries uh, are, are not. They not. They the Second Amendment's not there. Said, but. Uh, and, yeah. and they all think we're going to have more trouble than it's worth. They said, but we it's proven to be a very good right. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I think but look, so. you got some states right now, Virginia for one, that are that are basically trying to confiscate guns. They call it a gun buyback. The, the government didn't buy the gun. You bought the gun. It's your gun, and you have the right constitutionally to have it. You There's sure no do. buyback. But you know that yeah. they're trying to do you know what Australia did. I you cannot know. fathom. Uh, the United States, the people in the United States, giving up their guns. I just cannot. It's not going to happen. That'd be the worst thing they this ever did. This is one of the dumbest. Every ideas one of these socialist society. takeovers, every one of them, it starts with they don't do it until they gather up the guns. That's right. What they, they don't get realize, the guns, what they don't realize is okay. This happened in Texas, but what what actually happened is a deterrent for that happening again. That's right. Somebody sees that. You are and they're correct. Like, Man, that guy got off, you know, a couple shots, and somebody took him out. Six which, I seconds. Mean, to me, six seconds. You talking about dumb? Lasted. You come down to the south and pull out a weapon, you're fixed to get shot. Yeah. Because you know? most people I know, almost everybody, they have a gun. And most of them have many guns. <laughs> Multiples. You know, when we were duck hunting yesterday, and, you know, there's a group of people pulled up on a bridge down there, and it sounded like a war. He's like, what are they doing? Oh, they just shooting. Yeah. You know, I mean, they weren't, it wasn't, I didn't feel like we were under attack. I just thought, boy, if you run up on that crew, <laughs> I, heard it, I heard was, it from the duck blind and I thought, boy, when are they going to run out of ammo? <laughs> they finally did. They were blowing up things. Oh, know? yeah. I just, mean, it's kaboom. Now, we're down here deep in so, Redneck, Bill. Yeah. So dad mentioned it we're uh and we mentioned this last time we're going to dive in uh this to begin this year into the book of John it's one of our favorite books um we've often said before I guess if you just had to peel out one just to kind of get the story this is a pretty good one when you say that I always recommend the it's book a, of John to people that especially people that have had bad church experiences because this whole bible and we've said this over and over and over again it's a, it's a letter from a bean. Right. And he's so awesome and so giant and big that the human mind cannot comprehend. So, and he knew that. So he became a man 
his name was Jesus, to show you what God is like. Right. I mean, he's the image of the invisible God. So when you go to one of the Gospels, and, and I like John in particular, and you say, well, what is God like? What is the Bible? What is the point of the Bible? He just reveals through the stories and through the inspired you know, Holy Spirit what God is like in, in, in Jesus. There's no agenda. There's no, you know, he, John wasn't trying to convince you anything. He basically just said, here's what God's like. His name was Jesus, and you got 21 and chapters. And so just for our – there may be a lot of our audience that's that's new to the Bible. <clears throat> just to let you know, you know, we talked about basically Genesis through Malachi was pointing towards Jesus. And then you got Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, which is referred to as the Gospels because it's the story of Jesus. So that's why they call it the Gospels. It was four different – viewpoints, four different eyewitness viewpoints of what happened. And that's why there's four different books. A lot of people get, you know, like, well, this one didn't exactly say it the same way as that one. But that's why you have both is to give you a little more nuance. One of the greatest paragraphs in the entire Bible, in my opinion, the the guy, the one Jesus loved, John, wrote the Gospel of John. But once you read that, he wrote three little letters over in the end, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. The first paragraph in 1st John is, now listen to this, and it goes to what Jay said. He, he couldn't really come up with a way to describe what he had just, the person he had run with for about 30 <laughs> yeah. years. He, yeah. He, yeah. he couldn't come up with a description of what it was. Right. So he described him as a that and as an it. You say he, he, he just really didn't know how to describe what he had just seen. So I agreed. Watch. That which was from the beginning. And this is first, talking, John. first John. Yeah. First John, chapter, chapter one. He, he goes back to the creation of the cosmos right. from the beginning, which we've heard which we've seen with our eyes, which we've looked at, our hands have touched him. I mean, he's going through this thing of like, here's how close we were to this being. That's what Jay's called it. This we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared, just, just appeared. We've seen it. We've testified to it. I mean, we've seen it, the life. I mean, you, you, he's trying to come up with a way to describe. You can, you can put this in the bank. We proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and has appeared to us, the virgin birth. We proclaim to you what we've seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us, and our fellowship is with the Father, and with his son, Jesus Christ, we write this to make our or your joy complete. This is a message we've heard from him and declare to you, God is light in him, there is no darkness. Well, that's what he said in the Gospels over there. Right. But he starts out, that which yeah. was from the beginning. You I've know, always found that humorous. Yeah, you, know. you know, describe and you a being remember, and he calls him a that. He said that was who was from the you beginning. you got to remember, too, this is as you're thinking about this chronologically when they're writing it, he wrote, John wrote the Gospel of John earlier, much closer to when Jesus was there because they were writing down these eyewitness accounts. First and second, third John were letters written later in his life to churches. So, you know, what you also have is him probably having 20 or 30 years to sort of – ponder well, yeah you know what wasn't he the one who said wasn't it john who said and and look we're just we just recorded enough so you can know <laughs> he was like there's not enough books in the world oh to, i love not that books in the world. to write he, down everything like, look, i saw if you no, had seen it last, all we're just giving you the little little <laughs> that's the last verse in john which because we're you know here we are saying you know if you want to study the bible start with john and go backwards or forwards. Yeah. Yep. And, and he, he says that right off the bat in, in verse 17 of chapter one, because he says the law was given through Moses, which is what you just mentioned. You mentioned Genesis to Malachi, and John refers to that, but then he says grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. 
That's so new. he's already going back to the shadow of what happened with the law. That's right. But the last verse in John 21, we're doing the same thing. But I lo- this to me is a very powerful verse because everybody's trying to find some sign or they say if Jesus, you know, spoke to me or whispered in my ear. And it's not about so much of what he did because he made the point here. He said Jesus did many other things as well. Yep. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. That's how you go from a he to a that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, it's, it's, it's just hard to describe what this being is. And add to that, I always say it, but people are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I always say, uh, this description of this particular being, it's a wild story, uh, but we all are counting time by him. Yeah. Love him or hate him. You say, when it gets down to who are you counting time by? You say, well, some say Jesus, but we're saying it was the common era, which began at the same time, that same year Jesus showed up. I yeah. think it's also interesting <laughs> that John was the only one of the main characters. Or I hate to say characters. That sounds like it's but, <laughs> sounds like it from my movie. Yeah, but he wasn't martyred. He, he died of old age. But, right. you know, at first you hear that and you think, well, he made it. But then when you read, like, what some of the historical books say about him, oh, he was tortured. They put him in bowling. He was boiling. You know, yeah. oil. I mean, I, he probably was just a shell of a of a man when he died because they had attacked him so much. But the Lord had decided, you know, he had a, he, he was just going to keep him alive. That's why he wrote first, second, third. He's John. the only one that died an old, older man. Yeah. But, you know, another thing was the revelation came later in his life when he was kind of exiled to Patmos to an island. And so he wrote that, which, of course, is the last book we have in the Bible. So, he kind of wrote that in that dream-like right, state. apocalyptic the, yeah. language and all I'm that. I'm sure we'll get to that one day, which will be a fascinating podcast. I love the book of Revelation. Oh, it's really good. So, John, you're right. And it's interesting because at the end of John, when Peter is reinstated right before that verse you just read, he asked about John, remember? Because he was like, yeah. Peter, I mean, yeah. Jesus told Peter, he was like, you know, this is what's going to happen to you. Yeah. So he looks over there at old John. He said, what about him? <laughs> He's yeah. like, if, if, you know, if it's going to, if it sounds like it's going to end poorly for him, what about him? And he said, well, you know, that's not for us to decide, you know, yeah. times. I want to keep him alive. Well, he was basically well, saying, right. you worry about you. You don't worry about him. But I love but, it. But like, we do the same thing today. Sure we do. Because they're like, why do, why do bad things happen to good people? You know, I mean, we're eventually going to die. And, and, and the Lord could always step in there and say, no, I'm going to keep him alive. That's right. But to us, I mean, dying, I mean, we started off talking about what happens if, you know, That's if right. you're martyred for the faith. I I can with full confidence say it's not going to bother any of us, you know. No. I'm like, okay, fine, great. If that's what had yep. to happen, it does. But I mentioned Revelation, but I, I, I'll make a key point because I do think this coincides with John. The first verse of Revelation says the Revelation – singular you know a lot of people they they call it revelations like so it can keep going well right know? there's like yeah. oh let's get in here and see all these wild revelations nope only one and guess whose it is same jesus we're talking about the first four words the revelation of jesus christ yep so it's the same being that we have a hard time comprehending and grasping that's why people can get in there when it becomes your revelations or your interpretations or you got to stick with Jesus. And that's why we're going with John. Another verse I had that I love in the book of John, which is kind of goes into what we're saying. Cause there's a lot of, this is uh John five 39. There's a lot of debate when it comes to, you know, here we are studying the Bible and a lot of people like to argue and it's impossible for everyone to agree even at one church you're, you're going to have disagreements you know people think the bible says this and the bible says that and you say well, what do you do i love this point jesus made in john five thirty nine. he says you diligently study the scriptures because you think by them you possess eternal life well if i just stopped right there you would think well isn't that true that's what i was thinking <laughs> that's what i was thinking that's why we got to study our Bible. You know, we had all these, when I was a kid, you know, give me the Bible. You know, I was, 
that that's what I get eternal life. But then he makes this statement, which is our whole point. These talking about the scriptures, the old scriptures, right. are the scriptures that testify about me. Yet you refuse to come to me to have life. So, point being, there are people who study the Bible, and there's people who argue the Bible, and they have you know what they call them doctrinal matters, and they have all these arguments. If you're studying the Bible and you've missed the point that it actually reveals and points to a being named Jesus, which determines what God is like, you've missed it. It's not a manuscript. Maybe it, that's that, why, Jace, you don't see the word theologian in the Bible. <laughs> yeah, it's true. You know, in fact, when it brings up stuff like that, around. it says don't have anything to do with stupid controversies and arguments over the law and genealogies and but you look, you go into church buildings, and I'm like, well, why don't they take that verse with the same enthusiasm about the verses they're arguing about? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I can read it. It says, avoid all foolish controversies and arguments about the law and genealogies. Right. And what's the, where's that at? Well, just take, uh, just take this. And yeah. it was causing a lot of problems then, and it still causes problems. And it's, John starts with, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. He's with God in the beginning. And the word became flesh, verse 14. Well, and we've seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son. Here's your Jesus who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Well, chapter 4, when he writes his little letters, 1 John, 2 John, in 1 John 4, he said, test the spirits. This is how you can recognize the spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God, but every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. He said that's anti-Jesus when you say God really didn't become flesh, become a human. John said that's anti-Jesus. You've got to believe that he was who he said he was and who he was. John said he was. Well, and I think that's a- God <laughs> appeared in flesh. That's right. So you think about Matthew, Mark, and Luke all basically start and have the full chronology of Jesus, but they start with him being born as a human, right? I mean, it goes through his birth and of the yep. beginning. John, unlike the other three gospels, starts with his divinity. That's it right. starts with the idea that, yeah, he was flesh, but he was God in flesh. So I feel like his whole book is more from that prism of his divinity and that he makes a case for that. And he gets over first, second, third John, and you got these Gnostics saying, well, he wasn't really a, you know, in a human body yep. because he couldn't be God and be in a human body. And so John has taken that on because of his earlier work to say, oh, yeah, he was in a human body because flesh is not bad. You know, God created yep. John 118 says what you're saying. It says, no one has ever seen God, but God the one and only who is at the Father's side, has made him known. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's basically what he was saying. You want right. to know what God's like? But for Jesus. the for the intellectual, philosophical mind, that's a tough one for them. Oh, yeah. They're like, wait a minute here. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. How could I be looking at the exact representation, the Hebrew writer said, of God? Right in a human body right and then right there they say it's got to be some kind of fairy tale it just it just can't well, plus be. remember the prevailing philosophy at the time the bible was written and by the way it's still here today oh, two thousand years later is that flesh is bad mind now is intellect but spirit is good Therefore, whatever you do in the body, the Greeks taught that the body, oh, you can have sex with little boys, whatever you want to do. Yep. That's all the body. That doesn't matter anyway. It's that intellect. They kept going back to intellect. Well, you see the same thing today. Sure. This whole move toward atheism is it's all about intellect, the body, the flesh. There's nothing. Oh, yeah. But the Bible says just the opposite. It said God created that which is good. Yeah. And then in us is the Spirit of God. So that's really John's whole point. That's why, you notice when we get to John 14 through 16, it's all about, he says, look, when I leave, it's going to be better. And his disciples are saying, better? How can it be better? And he said, because I'm sending the spirit that's in me is going to live in you. 
once I leave here, and it's going to be better for everybody. You'll have the divine indwelling. Yep. So he does the whole introduction Which of the Holy Spirit. Which flies in the face of people saying, we can be good. That's right. We don't need God. That's right. We'd be good yep. without they're God. They're missing the component that makes them good. That is correct. I love it when I'm studying with somebody and they're like, I mean, I've tried counseling and I'm like, oh, I, but there's, I have the ultimate counselor. And they're like, well, how do I get a hold of him? I'm like, well, I'm getting there. Let me let me introduce you to Jesus. Because <laughs> in John, we just talking about, I'll give you a counselor. Yeah. I'm like, oh, it's the ultimate counselor. Because it's day by day. You don't have to make an appointment. No, you wake up every day with the counselor. And, and, and the fees is low. The, the charge is <laughs> super low. The fees real low. You I think it's free. Yeah. yeah well, it's a, all it takes is free, accepting free. of it. I keep telling free. people, you know, old Neil Cavuto, he's in there arguing. When I said <laughs> uh, he had a show the next day to just kind of go through my what's in my little head. But, you know, he was talking about, you know, something about, well, you know, you, you, you don't really – I mean, not everybody's sinful and all that and have to make a big turn. Said, yeah, it is. I said, everybody's sinful. Right. They, have, they have to turn and, you know, to do what's right, be good. I said, Gavuto, everybody has sins, even you. I said, he said, oh, no, not me, never. I thought maybe a few. He <laughs> said, it's getting hot in here. Because <laughs> he was thinking or trying to get on me that you could actually be good without God. Right, you know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. Well, but, I think everybody th- and look, I Romans think people said, do no good one's things, good. Things, yeah. But people do good things that are not following Jesus. There are, but That's that right. doesn't mean they're flawlessly perfect. At some point, we mess up. It's evil, which is an evidence that there is a God. Well, one of the you things know? that's going to come up a bunch in the book once we get into it is that this was one of the things I think John was trying to impress upon people that he was writing to is that it was for people that other people looked at and thought were worthless. You look at John 4, whenever he comes up on this Samaritan woman at the well, which the Samaritans were basically half-breed. That's the mindset from the Jewish mindset because they had been taken away into captivity. And so, like, they weren't worthy of a discussion. I mean, it was against Jewish law to even have their shadow cross you. And yet, here's Jesus sitting here. She's at this well. And he's talking to her about her life. I mean, that's why the disciples rolled up when he's talking to her. And they're like, what's he doing talking to that woman? And, and a Samaritan woman on that. But he's showing something because they were all ignorant. They're like, well, he hadn't even eaten. You know, they're all thinking, though, now she went off and brought the whole town out. Yeah. And then you see the same thing in John 9. Remember the guy's there and he's blind. And the disciples say, Lord, what, what, uh, what caused this man to be born blind? Was it his sin or the sin of his parents or somebody else? Thinking retribution. Every bad thing is because you messed up somewhere along mm-hmm. He said, neither. Yeah, he really didn't answer the question. No, he said he just neither. Said, this happened so that the work of God might be displayed. Might be displayed in his yeah. life. So here's a blind guy that's been sitting there for 40 years blind. And Jesus says, this guy is going to, he's fixing to show you something. And then, of course, he, you know, he could see. I've read that many times. When I love to say, too. why did this happen? And I was I'm like, look, Jesus addressed it. I read John 9, and he said, a better question is, what are you going to do about it? That's right. He didn't answer why. If he had answered it, I'd give you an answer. But they well, look, said, why did it happen? And he said, what are you going to do about it? So, so last week, you know, our buddy Tim Lawson, and you know, yeah. played golf with us. He finds out cancer's just racked his body, you know, inside organs. So I drive down to Baton Rouge and to see him because I just wanted to pray for him. And, you know, you never know when you get news like that. And so we sat there and we talked for a while. And, you know, Lawson's a good guy. But he was like, what I loved about it is just, he said, just what you just said. He said, you know what? I'm hoping for a miracle. I'm hoping God just takes this away. And that's what we prayed for. But he said, you know what? As long as he's glorified, in the struggle that's all that matters so he was saying what jesus was saying yeah. i don't know why in in terms of that it happened to me but since it did i just want to make sure god gets glory through the struggle mm-hmm. i'd like him to take it away because you know i'd like to see my grandkids i'd like to hang around he just got married you know three or four years ago but he said god gets the glory no matter what well you take a heart like that that's yeah. what it's all about that way if well, it takes you well, it takes you. and one of the things people need to understand they'll I've heard this over and over and over, and almost identical, I think, to what Peter said. I believe it was was Peter. Uh, there's a lot of people, and everyone listening to this, what they're basically saying is, Phil, I believe. Oh, I believe. But but I need some help with my unbelief. Yeah. I, I, I need something. 
So I usually tell them, well, what do you want him to do, write you a letter? I said, <laughs> Which he, he did. He, which he did. I said, <laughs> he's written you a series of letters, personal letters, where you can look, give you some insight on who he is, becoming flesh, his death on a cross to remove your sin, his resurrection. All your problems are falling like dominoes. He, he solved mankind's problems things that we we cannot fix right. think and about the, it and the nature of like al you mentioned those two stories about the women at the well look that's what uh, his you, letters are saying about him right so you have to read them right. you automatically though deduct from john 4 jesus who's god in he's the image of god he's not a racist that's right there's not a racist bone in his body nope. Nope. you get to john 9 you're like he's compassionate that's right. He, if someone's going through a problem, not by their own control. I mean, it just happened. He was born blind. He's compassionate toward that. But I mean, we're we're just the first two stories you mentioned. If you were just reading it without an agenda, without an attack on the Christian faith, and you said, "What was Jesus like?" You're not going to see anything that the church is maligned about. You know, people That's right. differentiate that. They right. they use these things like, oh. But when you just read John and say, what was Jesus like? Loved everybody. Right. He was compassionate to people. Share with Always anybody. forgiving, even at the point of death. Always That's forgiving. Right. Always sharing. Reinstate people that oh, that yeah. were that betrayed him. So yeah. a lot of the problems, we bring it on ourselves. I mean, you, you really think about it. You go to the doctor tomorrow, and he tells you you got six months to live. Well, he didn't tell you anything you didn't already know. That's right. We we're not gonna be here at some point. You're only gonna have six months to live. At some point, that's you're coming. All, we're all yeah. on the clock. At some point, <laughs> you get to the end of the clock. But all yeah. of a sudden, you're like, well, I'm not. That on, is I'm precisely what when when I zoned in on the resurrection of the dead. When I looked at that at 28 years old, I'm 73 now, but at 28, I looked at that and I said, if there's ever an opportunity, a chance to get off this planet alive, that's what it's going to be right there. That's right. That's what's going to happen right there. Right. If that doesn't happen, I'm not getting out of here. That's right. Well, I just zoned in on it because I'd never heard it. Right. When I heard that, I said, okay, all right. <laughs> I'm, I was going wide open one way. I'm going wide open the other. That's, that's enough right. for me right there. Well, if you think about it, Al, that's all we have. That's all we have. Well, one of the things we'll see as we continue this is – in John 1 where it says he is life in him was life you know he it's not like he decided to live he just is life that's why when it got to Acts 2 and Peter was trying to describe him it said it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him because he just is life you know he became a human so he could die for us but it's impossible for Jesus to to die. Could fallible men, Al, if they have, they sure haven't proved it. Could fallible men dream up a infallible God? Could they do it? I, 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 Not look, in this detail. I've done a lot no. of reading. I, no. Most people are shocked, but I've done a lot of reading. <laughs> I've never come close to anybody, you know, prognosticating on this and that and the other. I've never human, read a story like this. Human one. imagination is pretty powerful, but to dream this up. Well, my point <laughs> is, look, when people, they link God, they blame God for death. Yep. When he's life. So... It's not a problem if you were just life, not you decided to live or that you were living. If you just were life, it was impossible for you to stop living. You would never view death as a problem. At all. There's, there's no problem there. So I can't believe these people died and they were That's good why people. all things are possible. To go well, back to where we started, you know, when the Columbine uh, shooting happened, yep. the guy was going class to class and he was like, Anybody follow Jesus? I'm not sure exactly what he said, but he was saying something along those lines. Well, nobody was standing up, you know. Well, one girl did, and he, he killed her. Uh -huh. And so you know, I, I heard people say, I mean, why would God let that happen? Well, to her, she would rather be dead than deny Jesus. I mean, he put her on the spot. She made a decision that I support, honestly, as a believer, because she knew her faith was so strong 
that she thought this was a moment. And look, it encouraged my faith. And I'm a million miles away. I never met her, but I thought I'd tell you what. And to prove the point, that was 20 years ago, and we're still talking about her. We're still talking about it because she believed that death was not a problem in Jesus. You know why? John 1 says, in him's life. There is no death. Yep. I'm not going to deny him. You go ahead and shoot me. So we're going to be making the case uh, for Jesus. We're excited about it. Uh, We're also going to be preaching through the book of John at our church at WFR. Um, so we're looking forward to diving in. We want to encourage you to read along with us. Uh, this is a great, you know where we're going, so uh, we encourage you to read the book of John. If uh, you know if this is all new to you, just read you know a little bit along as you go through. We're going to explain yeah. a lot of stuff and just have some fun um, really diving into the Word this year because I think it'll be an encouragement yeah. to you. But I'm, I'm calling it the case for Jesus. I mean, it's a pretty good case. I'll give you a farewell bumper sticker. I've always said, you know, if you shoot at me, you better not miss. But even if you don't miss... I'll be back. (laughs) He's like MacArthur. (laughs) All right, we'll see you next time on Unashamed, the book of John. So, you know, our family from the beginning, even Duck Dynasty, everything, has been about getting the word of God to as many people as possible. And, And YouTube has been a big part of that, which we're grateful for. Unfortunately, we're hearing from some of you that they aren't necessarily showing you every episode. So we basically got to let them know that you love this podcast and you want to listen to it. So there's a way you can help us out as well as yourselves. If you're not subscribed, subscribe to Dad's YouTube channel on youtube.com slash Phil Robertson on Blaze TV. It's a lot of information. YouTube.com slash Phil Robertson on Blaze TV. That's all one. You hit the notification bell icon. This tells YouTube that this is content that you want. And we want to try to give them a thumbs up on the videos as well. So do that. Uh, that keeps us being, being able to make sure we get everything out because we want you to keep watching and listening uh, to our podcast, Unashamed.